My background is in theoretical cryptography, um, and I'm now working at a company called SNPs, a French startup company, where the basic motivation is to make uh, technology so smart that it kind of disappears into the background. So this means uh, heavy use of artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, which of course leads to some privacy issues. Uh, because of that, there's been a policy that everything has to be uh, privacy by design. Uh, and the approach so far has been to do machine learning locally on the device, so on your, on your phone, uh, because that trivially implies uh, privacy guarantees. But of course, there are some features uh, that inherently require some kind of communication. Uh, and for these features, in order to implement them, we can, we can look at some of these more modern uh, cryptographic primitives uh, to achieve that. Um, Okay, so specifically, uh, crypto in recent years has evolved on, on one field called homophic encryption, where we actually do the computation directly on ciphertext. So I can, send, I can encrypt with my public key, I can send you the ciphertext, you can somehow manipulate the plain text inside the ciphertext, send me back the encryption, I can decrypt and see the result. Uh, and specifically, the, the, uh, uh, the evolution in this, uh, or the progress in this, has been in uh, developing more schemes that allows for for, more, uh, for a larger class of functions to be computed. Uh, there's been another development as well. It's been around since the 80s, but it's been become more practical in recent years. It's called secure multi-party computation, where the basic idea is that we have a set of players, P1 to, to Pn, that securely wants to compute a function f um, on their combined input, right? So player, player 1 has x1 uh, and so on. And now they, together they want to compute a function, revealing some y, y1 to yn, where the, which is distributed to the, to the players. Traditionally, the way to, to look at this would be to say, okay, I, we can have some trusted third party. We all send our input to the guy in secrecy. He's going to evaluate the, the function and then send back the, the output to each one of us. Um, but then the purpose of secure multi-party computation is to eliminate this third guy and, and do it directly. Uh, and, yeah, and, and the illusion here has been on practical protocols. So anyway, so I just wanted to show a few uh, simple ideas uh, for how to, to use this stuff to do what I think is kind of interesting stuff. Um, the first thing is uh, it's private location equality. So basically we have two players. Uh, in this case, Bob wants to know whether Alice is in a specific location or not. This could be, for instance, is Alice at work or is she at home? Uh, but we don't want that Bob learns more than, than the bit of this. We don't want that he... Uh, that he can see where Alice actually is, unless she's at home or at work. Uh, on the other hand, we don't want require Alice to be online. Maybe she's in the metro, maybe there's no connection, uh, maybe she chose to turn off her phone. Uh, and lastly, we don't want outs outsiders, including uh, us as a company, to learn uh, anything uh, about this at all. In fact, we're going to learn a bit, we're going to learn that communication took place, but we don't want to see any of the locations or anything like this. Um, so the basic scheme for this is that we have Alice on the left, uh, we have Bob on the right, and uh, they could do this directly between them, right? But since we had this requirement of being offline, what we do is uh, Alice knows the, the, sorry, the public key of Bob, so she takes her location, LA, encrypts it under Bob's public key, puts it up to the server, which is basically a bulletin board uh, that's able to, to perform a simple computation. Uh, and she can do this whenever she wants to. So whenever she arrives home, whenever she arrives at the office or whatever. Then Bob, when he's interested in saying, okay, is Ali is now at work or is she at home? He sends the location he's interested in. So LB encrypts it again under his public key. Then the server can do using the homomorphic properties, a simple computation where it, it computes a bit. That's basically saying, okay, if the distance between the two locations is below a certain threshold, then it's true. Otherwise, if it's not, then it's false. She sends this bit back to, to Bob, who can then decrypt using his private key. Uh, and he just obtained this one bit. Uh, notice here that the server doesn't learn anything because it's just seeing ciphertext uh, all the time. So how can, we, how can we implement this? What kind of scheme do we need? And the typical one for this is called partial homomorphic encryption. Um, we, oh, I should start with, okay, so equality by location is here by, by a geo hash. Okay, so we say that uh, the distance is, is small if they, they hash to the same uh, geo location. Uh, then we need the homomorphic encryption scheme where we have addition, so we can take two ciphertexts. Notice it's not XOR here, it's an it's a operation in the ciphertext domain. So we, we can add two ciphertexts and that gives us another ciphertext, uh, with the plain text being the addition of the two. Uh, and we can also multiply with a, with a constant from the outside, that's not encrypted. Okay. 
And then our equality is just to say, okay, we, we can subtract the two ciphertexts. That gives us the difference between the two. If they're the same, we're good. We get zero, meaning that uh, they're actually in the same location. However, if, they, if they're not the same, then we get a number. Basically, we get the difference between the two, which is revealing a bit too much. So what we can do is we can, we can mask this by multiplying with a, with a random value. Um, and then this is what the server sends back. So why is this not revealing more than the bit? Well, the thing is, if you get a zero, you get a zero in the, in the real protocol as well. And if you get a random value, well, if you got the one, you could generate this random value by yourself. Right? You could just think of a random number, multiply by one, and uh, so you don't, you're not learning anything more than, than you could otherwise. So that's the first uh, little demo. Uh, the other one is, okay, so what if you actually want to know how far he is from a specific point? Here again, we don't want to know the exact location. We just want to see, okay, he's, he's five minutes away. Um, but not where he is. So Bob, again, should learn the, well, here should learn the distance. Uh, Alice is not required to be online. And again, outsiders should learn as little as possible. The scheme looks uh, more or less the same. The only difference is that now the, the computation the server has to do uh, is slightly different. Uh, for this, we need a somewhat homomorphic encryption scheme, where instead of a distance being determined by the, by the geo hash, it's now the, the typical Euclidean distance. Uh, we need, again, the homomorphic encryption scheme, but now we need that it's also capable of what's called bounded multiplication, where we can actually multiply two ciphertexts and get the, re the result. Uh, in the plain text domain. Uh, but it's bounded in the sense that there's only a, a limited amount of multiplications we can do. At some point, the, the way they work is that you, every time you do multiplication on ciphertext, you add a bit of noise to the plain text. And at some point, this noise becomes too much and you can't reliably recover the plain text uh, if you know the secret key. But you can do a few. And in this case, we just need to do one, basically. So it's definitely okay. And then the distance is just if we rewrite the... Um, the Euclidean distance a bit, uh, we can just compute it like uh, you would um, in high school um, arithmetic. Okay. Uh, so this was for homomorphic encryption. Well, I guess I should say one thing here. So now we had partial homomorphic encryption. We had somewhat homomorphic encryption. And then the breakthrough that came a few years ago was what we called fully homomorphic encryption, where you can actually run any arbitrary uh, circuit on this. So you can do an arbitrary number of multiplications and additions. And this, is, uh, this represents any function, right? Uh, today is not practical, but um, people are working on that. Um, okay, so turning to multi-party computation, taking the server out of the, um, of the picture, we want Alice and Bob, in this specific case, to know how many contacts they have in common. Uh, one bigger use case for this has been pharmaceutical companies that want to see uh, if they've done kind of the same research. They don't want to share research the other party hasn't done, but they would like to collaborate on the, on the results they actually found. Um, okay, so Alice and Bob in this case want to find the common context. It could also be they want to plan uh, in the calendar, so they want to compare what uh, 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 free schedules they have in their calendar. Uh, and again, outsiders should learn as little as possible. So I'm actually not going to show the protocol for this um, because I was wanted to do it quick. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Um, so yeah. So just to, to illustrate the problem here, that or the, the setup. So Alice knows a set of inputs A, B, and C. Um, Bob knows uh, C and D, and then they will run a protocol together, and the output to Alice uh, should be C and the same to B. But no one else knows anything. Um, there's a simple protocol for doing this. I guess if we have a minute, I can, I can kind of sketch it. Uh, it's based on the Diffie-Hellman uh, hardness assumption, where Alice would send um, a, basically a simple um, uh, hash value uh, raised to a certain um, exponent for, for the Diffie-Hellman scheme to Bob. Bob can do the same. Then they use that Diffie-Hellman is commutative uh, for this. Uh, and in the end, they end up with the, the same value that they can, they can compare. Um, okay, but well, that was actually it. Thank you for, for your attention.